things is looking at what is what we're going to call the average value of a function. And then the other one is kind of not really related, but it happens to be in the same section here. Uh, looking at absolute value of a function. That we've actually already seen before a little bit, but the, the more difficult one or the, the more involved thinking is required for the first one, average value of a function, which you know of as the average of something. Um, let me just tell you first that uh, let's remember what the average is. When you first learn about average, somebody probably taught you the average of, uh, to find the average of something, like three people here, right? Here's three people. Somebody with a large head and uh, somebody else here. And uh, I don't know. Three people. Do you want to give them names? No, this is going to lead to a distraction. Stop. This is Joe. This is Bob, and this is what we need. We need some hair on this person here. Okay. There's your hair. I'm guessing it's going to be a girl, too. Name it Jim. A girl named Jim. Billy. 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 Okay, it's a, it's a girl named Billy. Fine, okay. It's a girl named Billy. Fine, wonderful. Uh, when you first learn to, uh, we actually need one other person here because it's easier. No, it's fine. Three is fine. If you uh, if you're working out the average of something, you learn in grade six or seven or wherever it is. If you ask a grade six or seven, they say, "Oh, I know what the average is. It's when you add everything together and divide by how many there are." Right. So if if this person has in their pockets ten dollars, and this person has. Uh, what I don't know, uh, eight dollars, and this person has uh, three dollars. Let's rig the numbers a little bit. That per those person have that person has three dollars, and you say, what's the average? The average is seven dollars, right? Now, so the grade six would just say ten plus eight plus three. Work that all out and divide it by three, right? Because there's three people, so they'd say it's twenty-one divided by three, which is seven dollars. If you think about it kind of uh, concretely, what you could tell the person is the average is like if you collected it all, took all the money, right, and then you redistributed it equally, right? If you took all this money, took it over here piled it all together, and then took it and redistributed it equally to everybody, each person gets seven. That's what the average is, right? When you talk about an average, you're really talking about the arithmetic average. You're saying if we equalized everything, that's what an average is, right? If you ask what your average is in a course, you might have got 80% on this test, and then 60% on that test, and 70% on this test, and 90% on this test. And you say, what's my average? And you say, oh, my average is, uh, what is it there, 75%? That's saying if you lumped all that together and made them all the same, having these four marks is like having four marks the same like that, right? Having four 75s. That's all an average is. It's taking it and equalizing it. Now, you might think, what does that have to do with this? We're talking about what's the average value of a function, right? Now, marks on a test or people with you know money or whatever, it's sort of a function, I guess. If we, if you look at, if you looked at marks on a test, and here was your marks, right? Here's your four tests. One, two, four. That's great. One, two, three, four. I think I can count. Let's even get crazy and use actual straight lines, like this. Um, if you were trying to plot your marks on the test, and you said uh, the first one's 80, and the next one is 60, and then this one is 90, and this one is 70. Um, you could even do it like a bar graph, right, if you really wanted to. And there's your four bars, right? If this was 60 and this was 80 and then there's 70 and there's 90. So you have your four bars in the bar graph. Basically what finding the average is is taking that and equaling it out so they're all the same. Saying that the average is right here at uh, 75, it's as though you equalized all of that, right? It's as though you said whether it's people with money or marks on a test, it's like saying the ones that are higher, some of that is going to go to equalizing this, right? And the one that's a bit higher, it's going to go to equalizing this. Just like when the people had uh, $10, $8, and $3, well, it's like three of these dollars go to this person and one of these dollars go to this person, right? 
so that then this person has seven, this person has seven, this person has seven. If you drew a graph of that, it'd be the same thing. Ten dollars, eight dollars, three dollars, and the average is here at seven, right? That money goes to this person, that money goes to that person, right? So it's 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 the same concept no matter what situation you're looking at. Finding the average is like equalizing the, the sum or the total, right? If you wanted to write a, a formula for this, it's like uh, the sum of all of the data values, right? Um, if you're using X to mean the mark you got on a test, like X1, X2, X3, and X4, let's say if those are the values, like if those are the actual marks on each of your tests, right? This mark here is X1, this is X2. So you have, you have uh, four marks, right? X3 and X4. Basically, the, the average is, or if you want to say X average, the average is the sum of all those divided by how many there are, number of them, right? Now, what it has to do with this is we want to talk about what the average value of a function is or the mean value of a function. Okay, we want to work out what the average value is. The problem here is it's not four distinct discrete values like this or three discrete values. It's it's a continuous thing, right? If I took this graph now and said, okay, let's let's pretend the average is in there, and instead of this, instead of those four bars, let's say those were points on a on a curve that went like this, right? And I know for marks in a course, it's not going to be like your mark isn't calculated instantaneously. But if it was that, you could still talk about what's the average value of that function. Let's say you had another function that went through all those points, but it went like this. And it went way down here, and then it went like that, and it went up. Oops, it went up there, and then it touched that and went down there. Which one, That's pretty badly drawn, but which one of those two curves is going to have the higher average value? Which one? Is the, is the green, is the average of the green going to be higher, lower, or the same as the red one? The, let me point out that the green one is below the red one the entire time, right? So it's going to, so the green one's going to have a lower average value somewhere in here, right? Let's make it simpler. Let's make two curves those same colors. But let's say you had a function that looked like this and ended there. And let's say you had a function that started and ended in the same time there. Which one of those has the higher average value? The red one, the red one definitely has a higher average value. If this gets up to this, like think about if those were the speed of a vehicle, right? And this is kilometers an hour on the side. The red one gets up to like 85 uh, kilometers an hour right away and then travels at 85 kilometers an hour for a long time. Its average speed might be, is its average speed going to be 85 kilometers an hour? No, because it went slower at the beginning, right? So it might be like 80 or 75 or something like that. But the green one, this guy takes forever to get going. He's going uh, 20 kilometers an hour for a really long time, but then at the very end, he ramps up to 85. What's his average speed going to be? He was going 20 most of the time, so his average speed might be 25 or something like that. We want to look at what the average of a function is. The average value of a function is going to have to do with how high, where it is, but we're going to use the integral to figure it out. Okay? Let me, I, I know those graphs are great, but I want to show you this function. Okay? What I want to know now is for that particular function there, what's the average value? So from here, from this blue, to this blue, okay, from 2 to 8. Across that interval there, so let's ignore the part before and the part after, but I'm saying, what do you think the average value is? I'm gonna, I'm gonna move this until what you think, until you think it's sitting at the average value. Is the average, uh, is the average 5 just because that's halfway between or something like that? Is that gonna happen halfway in between? Is that gonna be the average value? Do you just go halfway in between 2 and 8? Not necessarily, right? You think it's favorite? You think it's more to this side? It, the average is not going to be like seven point. It's not going to be that high, right? Because it drops down and it's low for quite a while. But it's not down here. The average is not like two point five, 
right? It's it's probably in here somewhere, right? Somewhere in there. As soon as I show you the uh, the integral here, we can do exactly what we did with the bar graph. What did we do with the bar graph when it was four discrete bars? How do we how, visually how do we figure out the average when it was four discrete bars? We took the ones that were too high and what do we do with them? Kind of distribute it to the lower part, right? To find the av the average value of this function, basically is going to be saying take the integral and spread it evenly across this. So like if, if that was kind of a glass with sand in it and you shook it and leveled it out, it's going to look something like that, right? When I show you those two things, it's, it's a lot easier to tell where the average value is going to be. That value is way too low because look at all this area. That definitely doesn't balance out that little part that's lower, right? Whereas this, this average value up here, this part above certainly doesn't balance out that pink part over there. But somewhere in the middle is a spot where those two things balance out, right? Do you think where do you think it is? Somewhere somewhere in there? Any when we go higher or lower or somewhere in there? That? A little lower? Well, there somewhere, 4.51 maybe. I mean, we obviously we're just doing it by guessing, but you can use the integral to find the average value. Basically, you're equalizing it all across the entire thing. All the heights of the function are different all the way across, but it's like you're saying, what if I equalized all the heights all the way across and just made this constant function? That's the average value. So if I show you what the average value is, there's the average value. Okay, this uh, might be a little misleading here, right? Um, the average value is it's saying it's whoa in there somewhere, 3.83. That seems pretty low. What's going on here? No, that's that looks pretty. Uh, that looks pretty fishy. That looks pretty fishy. Um, I think something's wrong with this calculation, actually. But on this thing, I have to check that. I don't think that's right. Because I think, I mean, that uh, somewhere in here where we had it, the rectangle and the the integral are equal, right? These areas down here. Something's wrong with this. I got to check that. Um, but it's it's where you balance it out, right? It's you equally distributed across there. So let's uh, ignore that for a second. Okay, the average is somewhere in there. Something's going on with that. All right. Um, if we're going to write a kind of a formula for this, okay. Um, I didn't give you much space for this, but you know how if you had a function that looks something like this. This is for derivatives. We had a we had a mean value theorem for derivatives before. We said that if so, this is for derivatives. This is for using integrals, and this is going to let us find the average value of a function. The mean value theorem derivative said that if you started here and ended here, and you looked at the average. I'm actually going to write it like this because it's better. Maybe it doesn't matter, but. If you have those two points, if you look at the average slope, somewhere in between here, there's a value where the instantaneous slope matches the average slope. There's some C value where okay, there's some C value where the derivative equals average slope. In other words, f prime at c, the derivative at c equals the average slope. f of b minus f of a over b minus a. That we've had before, right? Instantaneous slope equals average slope. 
So that was true. Let's uh, change that so it's not so hard to follow. Okay, hey, we're going to have the similar thing here. If you have some curve, the way we just had a curve, we'll draw one like that. If you have A here and you have a B here, Somewhere in between here, somewhere here is the average value of that thing. If this is a continuous function, the way this had to be over here, if this was continuous, somewhere in between here is the average value, average height of that function. And the way you know is if you have that, if you look at that rectangle, right? Somewhere in there, the integral equals that rectangle. Okay, there's some... Um, there's some C value where the height times the width, right? So I'm going to say where a rectangle area equals integral. The area of the rectangle is easy, right? The height of the rectangle is C. What's the width of the rectangle? Yeah, it is A to B, B minus A, right? Actually, it's not C, what is it? It's not, the height isn't C, what is it? If this is F of X, it's, it's F of X, F of C, right? Sorry. So it's where F of C times that, right? These two things multiplied. The height times the width, right? And I should maybe even put that in. Height, and we'll even say average height, average height, times width. That's the area of that rectangle. There's some C value in there. The average height is in there somewhere where, where it's equal to that, that integral. The integral is just integral from A to B of F of X dx. Okay? Does that make sense? This is just saying the height of that thing times the width of this, okay, height times width of that rectangle, or in other words, the area of that rectangle, and then, so that's equal to this area here, right? It's, if you're taking that area and redistributing it, right, you're taking all that area and redistributing it so that it's, so that it's all flattened out. Again, it's like if you have sand in a glass, um, if you have sand in, in a glass that sort of is like that, and then you shake the glass and it kind of all levels out. It's going to, whatever level it comes to is like the average height of the thing, right? Whatever, wherever it ends up, right? Now, how does that help us? Um, you can rearrange this formula, and I probably should have put just for the sake of completeness here, area under curve, right? That's, that's how that's all related. We're going to rearrange this. I wish I had left a bit more space there, but you're going to rearrange that thing. If uh, if pink is equal to blue times yellow, if I want a formula for average height, which thing there is average height? Pink, blue, or yellow? Which one's the average height? The yellow, right? You, if you had f of c all by itself, what would the formula be? I'm going to write it over here and then move it after. So you hopefully can fit it in there somewhere. Yeah, integral from there of that divided by the width, right? B minus A. That's that. Uh, that's that. And then this is the area under the curve, right? Okay, I erased it up there, the sh shading in pink, but that's the area under the curve. It makes sense that if you take the area under the curve and divide it equally amongst the width of the interval, it gives you the height that you'd need, right? If you think of two different graphs again, if you have a curve that goes like this, and you say, here's A, here's B, if I take all of that area and divide it up amongst that width, the average is going to be up here somewhere, right? 
this rectangle is going to be like this. The average height is going to be pretty high. It's going to be up there. Whereas if you have another curve that goes like this, and you uh, you do exactly the same thing, right? Here's uh, here's A, here's B, and you divide that up, right? That's not nearly as much area, right? Not nearly as much area here underneath, right? Not that much area. So the average height's going to be down here somewhere, right? This is going to be a lot lower, right? That average height's only there. The more area that's underneath, the higher the average height is. Okay? This is the average height formula. Average value of a function or average height. Okay? You could put a note there. Average value of the function. I didn't put a nice place to write this, a box or something. I probably should have. But I can create space here, and you can't. In the textbook, they would write it this way, right? They they wouldn't write it. They don't like going integrals divided by something like that. So instead, they would say 1 over b minus a. So they put that part on the bottom. And then they'd say times the integral from a to b. It's no different. That's the, just the same formula, right? It's exactly the same, OK? And they wouldn't say f of c. They would just say, I think they use the notation f average, right? Sub average. OK, average value of that function is the area divided by the width. Area divided by width. Does that make sense? If you want to find this for this, let's do this one uh, one thing right here. Simple enough function, y equals x squared from 0 to 2. I don't have much room here, but uh, I want you to make a guess as to what you think the average is first. So from here to here. In this interval, from 0 to 2, what's the average height? We can use some obvious things first. If the line went straight up like this, let's say the line went straight up like that. What would the average height be then? It would be 2, right? Because if you look at all the area there, right? If you filled in all of that area, right, with this highlighter that's not that thick, but we can hopefully do it really quickly. Not a bad job of that. <laughs> um, if you looked, this would be the average height, right? Because this piece here could fill in that piece there, right? And you have, then it all equals out. The average is going to be less than that, right? This has to be lower than that. It has to be down here somewhere because you got less area. You have less area than that, right? You're missing all of this stuff in here. So the question is, where is that? You can make a guess. I don't know, 1.5, 1.4, 1.3, 1.6, whatever, right? If you want to work it out, all you need to do is say, I'm going to find this area. and then divide it up by the interval, right? Divide it by how wide it is. All right, you're saying take that area and divide it by the, by the, by the width of that interval. So you're going to say average value of f here is integral from 0 to 2 of x squared dx divided by 2 minus 0. That's the width of the interval. That's the area underneath the curve. And then that's the average value you're going to get. And we expect the average value to be somewhere in this neighborhood, right? If you want to work out the, I mean, at this point, again, you can work out the, you can do this algebraically, or you can use a calculator. It doesn't matter to me. But it's not that hard of a one to uh, work out algebraically. One third x cubed. You don't need the C value if you're going to evaluate it as a definite integral. 2, 0, divided by 2, right? I'm just going to leave this on the bottom as the 2 there, right? What does the thing on the top give you? This is where it's easier to do it. This is where it's easier to write it as the second form I gave you. This form with a fraction in front. Because instead of writing, uh, instead of writing divided by 2, 
you can just put this in front, right? If you, I mean, it'd be, it'd be good to teach yourself that right off the bat here, right? Just say one half times that instead, instead of doing that, because then you don't have to worry about it. What does that give you? One half times, what is that? One third times two cubed minus, we don't have to do this, but I'll do it for the sake of completeness here. Zero cubed. We have what? One half times eight thirds. So what does that give us? Four thirds. One half of eight thirds is four thirds. Is that reasonable for what we thought? It is, isn't it? Let's move this out of the way. Okay, it is. It is totally reasonable, right? Okay, 1.3. 1.3 repeat. Seems reasonable, right? It's not that big of a deal if you understand the concept of what you're doing, okay? Rather than just memorize the formula, try and understand it, right? You're taking the area and you're equalizing it. Okay, there's a few other questions here that are kind of goofy things, right? But same concept again. Um, this one... You know, you could use the calculator to evaluate it. It's it's uh, e to the three x. Um, so it's it's some kind of a graph here. The function is going to look something like this because it's an exponential function. And you're just asking what's the average value from whatever ln two is to whatever ln of three is. So you're saying what's the average value here? What is that average value? If you want to find the average value here, can you try and write an expression first, actually, before I write it? I'll pause this for a second. So hopefully you have some kind of expression there. Again, we want if we want the average value, we need the width of the interval. Ln 3 minus ln of 2, that you're going to have to go to the calculator, times the integral from ln 2, ln 3 of e to the 3x. Since you're going to have to go to the calculator anyways, you might as well go to the calculator to actually evaluate the integral. Right? Like if you're if you're using whichever calculator you're using, um, like if you're using this one, if you're trying to use that one to evaluate it, there's a big mess there. Um, you can you can first of all just evaluate the integral. Just do uh, numerical integration. You have e to the power of you need brackets if you're doing 3x like that. e to the 3x, the variable's x. You're going from ln 2 to ln of 3. And it might take a little while and give you that. And then you need to divide that by the, the width of the interval, right? And we need, so we need ln 3 minus ln of 2. Don't leave out any brackets or anything. So that should give you what it is, right? If using the other calculator, it, it does it equally well. It just shows it the way, like it writes it the way you write it up here. But you need to figure out the integral divided by the width of the interval. Okay? Integral, interval. So roughly 15.62. Did I get it wrong? So it's, yeah, I mean, it's 6.3 repeat divided by that other thing. All right. Does that make sense, hopefully? Average value of a function? I hope. There's some goofy questions here, but these are kind of silly questions. Let this be a continuous function between 0 and 2. Um, all it's saying is if there's 0 and there's 2, if the function is always between 2 and 4, this is saying if the function always goes between 2 and 4, so whatever it looks like, we don't know. If it always stays between 2 and 4, what's the greatest this could possibly be? What's the highest that could be? What's the highest that area could be? This doesn't even directly relate anyways, right? What's the highest the integral could be? Well, it could be if, if the function went straight across at 4, 
then the highest the integral could be would be 8, right? That would be 8. Right? The highest it could be is 8. And what's the lowest it could be? Well, if it always stay between 2 and 4, the lowest it could be is, is 4, right? So it's got to be between this thing right here. It has to be between 4 and 8. Anyways, kind of a weird question. Same thing with this. This is the exact same question. It just says M and M and N in between it there. Okay, if the function value is between M and N, right? This is exactly the same question. Here's capital M, here's little m. So it says the function is always on A to B. It's always this function goes somehow in between those. The highest the area could be is this. Oops, except I'm drawing it in between the two. Highest the area could be is that, if the function was right up at the top. I only threw this in here because it was, it's an old AP question. Um, and the lowest it could be is this. Those two areas, this is uh, B minus A, right? So it's got to be less than M times B minus A, and it's got to be greater than little m times B minus A. It just sort of has to do with that average value a little bit. That's lots of information, I think, for one day. This last one? I did zoom through the last couple really quickly. Um, this, uh, both of them are saying basically the same thing, just worded differently. This thing is saying you have some kind of function, continuous function, across this 0 to 2. So it goes from there to there. And it says if the function is always between 2 and 4. So it, it can go up and down and something, but it has to stay between 2 and 4. And it's, all it's saying is if you do the integral, as in the area under the curve, the area under the curve has to be greater than that uh, kind of brown or orange or whatever rectangle it is, but less than the yellow one, right? Because the high, if the function was the highest the whole time, it would be 8. If the function was the lowest the whole time, it would be 4. And it's sort of the same thing here, except it's asked uh, it, It's asked in a, you know, it's just saying it's with an M and an N instead of a 2 and a 4. The function has to be between M and N then its area is whatever that height is times the width, and has to be less than whatever the upper height is times the width. Okay? It's not, I mean, that's just one example that's sort of related we threw in there, but the main concept is that average value. All right. I have to upload this for those Ashland travelers. Do you think they'll actually watch it? What do you think? Oh, well, you have to tell them. I will tell them. Well, I'll... I'll uh, I'll tweet it and at least one or two of them will get it.